Now we focus again on the recent mass shootings around the country and one city's effort to stop the violence. Earlier this month, a shootout in one of Philadelphia's busiest neighborhoods killed three people and injured 11 others. The number of gun violence victims in that city increased by more than 50 percent from 2019 to 2020. Last year, Philly had more than 2,300 shooting victims, and this year, that number is already above 1,000. Our national correspondent, Jerika Dunkett, recently embedded with a team of pastors and volunteers to see how the community is responding. Thank you all for uh, coming out tonight to our Corners to Connections initiative. Uh, is night 10. On this Friday night and every night this month in the shadow of darkness and flashing lights, 37-year-old pastor G. Lamar Stewart organizes faith leaders and volunteers. It happened to me on Juneteenth of 2021. My 23-year-old son, Evan Baylor, was gunned down in front of my house. This is a 30-day violence interruption initiative. To walk through Philadelphia neighborhoods plagued by gun violence. Group one, Lisa group two, Kelly group three. Split in different groups, these 22 violence interrupters patrol the streets from 9 to 11. How's everybody doing tonight? Introducing themselves to neighbors and handing out flyers about an upcoming job fair. We're having a job fair on the 30th. If you know anybody looking for work, boom. I got a job. Brennan right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> People have kids young, mm -hmm. so they don't know what to do. We turn around, try to find somewhere to work, trying to get, you know, get a job, and it's hard for us. Yeah. You know, just because of the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. And we're out here beating these streets, beating this pavement, mm -hmm. because we believe in y'all generation. And that's the main goal, to directly meet and reach as many young black men as possible, the ones most at risk of falling victim to the streets. People are used to someone maybe coming up saying, here's some information, putting a flyer in their hand. But what young people need is a constant presence and someone who's going to follow up. What should we be doing to help your generation, one, avoid the life of the streets, and two, to help get you all where you want to be. I mean, me personally, I say like try to get like the youth to try to get into uh, like different um, activities. I met a group of people similar to you, you know what I'm saying? They came up to me, you know, and they didn't stop. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I rejected them the first time, but they didn't stop. You know what I'm saying? So it's always good to know that you still care. I lost my son the same age as you. So it's important to, to hear what can we do or what can be done. How were you able to garner that strength to come out here? There are some days that are very difficult, like his birthday, devastating. People who keep committing these heinous crimes understand that while you took a life that you may have been mad about that day, look at the people that you leave behind and can you look at them in the face? Like whoever took my son's life, can they look me in the face and say that it was okay to do that? No, it's not. 18-year-old Wayne Lee Prouder III graduated from high school just hours earlier. Instead of celebrating, he came out to volunteer. I'm out here because I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. We shouldn't have to do this. It's like we can't keep depending on our older generation. It's time for this generation to actually step up and do what they have to do. You know, these are our kids. These are our nephews. These are our sons. Um, these are our daughters, our nieces. Um, and we understand that we have a responsibility as a church and church community. We have a responsibility as a society to wrap our arms around them. Do you ever lose hope? I may lose hope in man, but I never lose hope in God. I may lose hope in government, but I may never lose hope in God. Those volunteers say they plan to continue their efforts throughout the summer, maybe not every night like right now in the month of June, but they're committed. The 30 days on the streets, though, culminates with a job fair at the end of this month. You guys know that the situation in Philadelphia is dire. dire. Really is. Uh, the number of shootings they've had, over 200 people have lost their lives. And there's so many people that have a connection, whether it is a son, a daughter, an uncle, mm -hmm. a niece, etc. So this is... Um, a small part of the bigger problem in terms of what could be done. But I think you, you can feel that these people, they're tired, they're sick. You can talk about programs, you can talk about policy. Right. They're actually doing the work. That's mm -hmm. why I like people like Wayne, who's young. I know. Who said, I am sick and tired and that's why I'm out here. Yeah. And that's what it's going to take, young people rising up and saying right. enough. And the pastor who said he may lose hope in man and government, but he doesn't lose hope in God. Yeah. yeah. A lot of work to do there.